these are the notes on the right triangle trigonometric ratios. The first thing we needed to talk about when we talked about the, the trig ratios was defining the names of the sides of the of the triangle that we're gonna that we're gonna talk about. So I need a reference angle. And so in this case, x is our reference angle. Once I have my reference angle, I need to name the three sides in reference, that's why we call it a reference angle, in reference to that angle. So the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter if my reference angle sits over here or over here. It, doesn't, it can sit anywhere you want. Hypotenuse is hypotenuse, and we often use the letter H to signify that. But the opposite and the adjacent does require us to say where we're sitting. So if I'm sitting here and I'm looking across opposite, that's where my opposite side will be. And we use the letter O. And from my reference angle, the side that's right next to me or adjacent is right here. I use the letter A. We then had some ratios that we wrote, um, looking at ratios of O over H, or A over O, or O over A, or A over H. I mean, there are all kinds of different ratios that we could write. But uh, mathematicians decided that some of these ratios were really important and needed names. So they decided that sine of the reference angle, X, is always going to be the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse, O over H. And um, we often shorten that to be so. Um, cosine of x is the adjacent over hypotenuse, a over h, and we shorten that to be ka. And then tangent of the angle is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, o over a simplify that to be TOA. So one way to re remember the ratios is to memorize so ka toa And that would be something that you could probably say to many adults in your life who have gone through trigonometry and they would recognize that. so ka toa so ka toa now we need to look at some, some example, an example so that we remember, so we know how to use the, these trig ratios. So our example, we're going to be asked to find sine of x, of sine x, cosine x, and tan x. So the first thing I need to have, though, is I need to have um, what all three sides represent in terms of x. And I also need to know the third side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label and say, hey, look, 3 is my opposite side, and 9 is my hypotenuse side. But I need to find my adjacent side. You'll remember that since we have this as a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I have the leg 1 squared plus leg 2 squared equals hypotenuse squared. In this case, my legs are 3 and some number I don't know. So I have 3 squared. We'll call that letter I don't know A, just since it is the adjacent side, equals 9 squared. 9 plus A squared equals 81. A squared equals Oops, 72, get a little ahead of myself. So A equals the square root of 72, which I can simplify to be the square root of 36 times the square root of 2, 6 square root 2. So I now can add that in right here, 6 square root of 2. I now am going to actually find the three trig ratios, the three trigonometric ratios. I am going to start with sine x. And we'll remember that just a moment ago, we talked about so ka toa. 
And this was something that I actually would write at the beginning of my tests when I took tests on this topic um, so that I didn't have to keep saying it over and over again in my head um, and so that it would be um, something for me just to quickly reference. So I'm looking at the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite over hypotenuse, which can simplify to be one third. I'm then now going to find cosine of x. Um, cosine of x is ka, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So 6 square root of 2 over 9. And that can be reduced to be 2 root 2 over 3. So I have now found 2 out of my 3 trig ratios. The third trig ratio that I'm going to find is tan of x. Tan of x is toa, so opposite over adjacent, so 3 over 6 root 2. And I can simplify that to be 1 over 2 root 2. Now depending on your teacher, they may have um, taught you that you can't have square roots in the denominator. It's just a mathematical nicety that was, you know, came into fashion at some point. Um, but I am going to follow through with this and say, yeah, you can't have square roots in the denominator. So the way we get rid of a square root is to no longer make it a square root. So it needs to be a perfect square. So what number would I multiply the square root of 2 by to make it a perfect square? Say, square root of 4. Well, I would multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 2. So my numerator now is 1 times the square root of 2. My denominator is 2 times the square root of 4. But we know what the square root of 4 is. The square root of 4 is 2. So I now have that tan of x equals the square root of 2 over 4. And that cannot be simplified further because the 2 is underneath the square root. I can't divide those two numbers into each other. They would both have to be underneath the square root or both not be underneath the square root.